there's an old farmer's saying which I've heard to be true and it's also true in horses and it's not a very nice subject not a very nice thing to talk about but it's something we've got to bear in mind especially as trainers so it's not the vicious bull farmers say that kills you it's the gentle one because you're not expecting the gentle one to do something to to barge into you to push past you to gore you come to that you're just not expecting it so you're not aware so this horse we've got here and that's to exaggerate it and it doesn't sound very nice i understand that but this is the point i have to get over to this owner this horse at the drop of a hat for no apparent reason will leave the road so i'm just walking down here because you know when we're trotting along you can't hear very well so you can see if you look up behind you can see it's a long old way so we're going downhill there's very little work involved and we're only oh, approximately four miles from home i think it might be a bit less than that i think the round trip's about seven so we've come out with him and we've filmed a couple of three times when he just leaves the road for no reason when he decides um he's had enough or he'd like a bite of grass i am serious now he would leave the road so he would climb up this bank here and think nothing of it now i broke this horse a good few years ago and he certainly was not like that then um because i would be discussing it with the owner you know at the time um he was just a real, you know just a I don't want to say, a, you know, a run in the middle, because none of them are that. They've all got their own funny little ways that you've got to learn to adapt and conjole and, and kid along. Um, but he's a nice, kind horse, got no badness in him at all, but he will do that. Now, in my opinion, which again is a silly thing in one way to say, oh, I know what's wrong with him, because I don't. So I can only say in my opinion. In my opinion... He's, he's done something like that and not been reprimanded, chastised, corrected, whatever you want to say. That does not mean beaten with a stick, screamed and shouted at, but it's just checked and told, no, you don't do that. Just like you've got, a, you know, a dog crossing the road with you, you want it to sit down at the curb. You don't want it to jump forward when the traffic's coming past, do you? Even if it's on a, you know, when it's on a lead, you know. So you want it just to do what you asked it to do. Sit down, wait, just make sure the traffic. Because you as the driver are the one that's in charge of this horse. Now, the point I'm making is this will leave the road. Now, I would consider myself, without sounding conceited, an experienced driver. Been doing it a long, long time now and broke many, many horses. Um, and a lot of the horses we get, a lot of the horses we get, people have already tried to, you know, either do them themselves or they've been to somewhere else or whatever, and they end up with us and we do the best we can to get the best out of those horses. Ponies, you know, whatever. But the point I'm making now, this horse is kind, gentle, everything is all right about him, he's nice, he wouldn't kick or bite you or do anything at all wrong. But he will leave the road if he thinks he's going to, he would just walk up this grass here for no reason whatsoever. Now, obviously when he come back he was unfit, so we have a program for each horse and that can change from day to day. And we just build up the miles slowly. And if all she's overweight or desperately unfit, then we'll put him up alongside Cloud, you know, schoolmaster. Let Cloud do the work. So they've got no, no weight on their shoulders at all. They're just jig jogging along the side of Cloud. So Cloud's doing the work um, that's required and they don't have anything to do. But you would look at this horse going up here the reins on his back there as quiet as a lamp with no brakes on nothing hands empty 
and he'd walk up here or anything. But he would walk straight across there and this drain hole here, going into a ditch. He'd have you down there in two seconds. Um, and I don't know the reason. I thought at first it would have been that when he was originally driven, when he went back all them years ago, he's been out of work for four years, hasn't done anything. So you have to think to yourself, what are the possibilities? Well, one, coming back to work and thinking, oh, I don't really want to do this. Well, that you can understand. If you've been on holiday for two weeks, don't really want to go back to work, do you? So let alone four years. So walk up, my darling. There's a good baby. So there's one possibility there. Well, what you've got to do with that is make every trip an enjoyable one, you know, and that's what we try to try to do. If you look at the horses that we're driving, they're not, you know, under stress or, you know, swishing their tail particularly or ears laid back or, you know, any of the body language that, you know, the simple body language. I mean, obviously I've done it a long time and I can see more preps than the average person in body language because I've seen too many. Um, so, come on, my darling, that's it. So traffic, arena, river, bridge, all of them things, no problem at all. But if he thought he would stop now and uh, eat a bit of grass or nibble that edge, he would just stop, pull over. I am doing my very best to stop him. How am I stopping him? So I'm learning to read as I have to with every horse that comes. Of course, you've got a library, haven't you, of all the horses you've done in your head. But, um, and I think I'll try this, I think I'll try that. Um, and we're getting there but now he knows that he mustn't do it with me because you get told off I won't be happy what concerns me is when he goes home that he does it there because it's like this when you you've got to go away for the day you know you've got some children you've got to go away for the day and you've got to leave your children with, you know, with Nan or with a friend or like that. If you leave it with a friend or anybody come to that, because you've got to go to a funeral, wedding, whatever it might be, you can't take the job. When you come in, the very first thing you asked is, have they been good? Yeah? Well, of course they've been good. It's very unlikely that they wouldn't be good. Because it's all new, isn't it? It's all strange. It's all... You know, different rules, regulations, different, you know, different, different something for tea or, you know, don't have lunch till one o'clock, wherever it might be. So it's different. Come on, my baby. There's a good boy. Come on. So when they come to me, although he'd been here four years ago, he went long before he remembered, you know, and, and started to pick up. I've been here before. I know this place, that type of thing. But there is that element that you know, advantage we have, um, which we can lay the new rules down, can't we? No, you don't do that. You don't kick your stable door when you want feeding. You wait your turn, yeah? Um, all, the, all the silly little things that you need to do. And every time you do one thing that you get the horse to do what you want by kidding, conjoling, doing whatever you've got to do. I'm not saying buying it with sweeties and kisses and cuddles but say no that'll do yeah stand still when you're told that type of thing yeah so a little bit of uh it's like when you was at school like any one of us go to school you went into one classroom and you messed about there was paper planes flying about messages coming from this girl over to that boy or whatever it might be the general not paying attention not getting on with the work taking the teacher for a fool right You'd leave that classroom, go into another one, you'd sit bolt upright, get on with your job and do it. Why? That person didn't hit you around the head with a piece of wood, did he? Or smack you or, you know, or do whatever. You just knew that you you couldn't get away with it with that person. And that was the difference. So, but as long as you was all right and you was doing what you was asked to do, the world's a wonderful place, everything's good. 
So that's the advantage we have. It concerns me greatly with this horse that it goes home and the owner is not on top of it because I'm telling you now, it will turn, it will go up that bank just as happily as it to turn around and go home. So especially leaving home, um, no, I would say especially because it does it quite a, you know, a long way from home, um, and it would just stop. That's the other thing, it just stopped dead and it don't want to move. Now, it doesn't mean to say you've got to get off and drag it, and then someone's going to say to me, is the cart to him? Of course it isn't. You know, it's not, you know, we're not stupid. We do, do a great deal of, a great number of horses. And you learn over the years. So this little fella's got away, in my opinion. I have no proof of what I say. And even if I ask the owners, right, I'm not saying that they would lie to me, not at all, not in one I hope am I saying that, but how they see a situation with this horse in the past might be entirely different to how I see it, and more likely would be entirely different. So that's what I'm saying. So the horse that comes over as and he is genuinely kind, gentle, easy to handle, pretty good ground manners. They could do with improving a little bit, but pretty good ground manners. And in general, you know, he's no problem to have in the yard. But he has that thing about him when he will turn. Now I'm going to put up, or oh, I'm not, but real put up in there and show you a couple of free instances where he's just doing something for no reason whatsoever. So we're just approaching this little lane. Now he's going to pull off. I'm asking him to come to the right, and he's still arguing with me now and pulling off. I'm allowing him to do this so you can see the problem we've had. That is dangerous. Very dangerous indeed. So now we've got a turning on the right hand side. He wants to go down there. I want him to go straight on. So I've got to bring him over. And then I've got to just give him a little tap with them reins just to chastise him. Don't do that. So you mustn't confuse the two issues. Here you've got a lorry coming down. It's early part of training. I don't mind that he drifts over a little bit. That's to be expected. You must understand, I'm trying to teach you. Just watch this horse. For no reason, he's not being steered. He'll just leave the road. Nothing to do with the van. He's not worried about that. He'll leave the road. Now, that's dangerous because if there's a bank, he's going to drop down him. So I just say, yeah, OK, come on. You mustn't lose your temper with them, you know, you just got to be nice and quiet um, and ask them to walk on. So here he goes off again, bring him back on the road and he's doing fine and off he goes again. And it's not because, oh, he's tired and he wants to, you know, it's nothing to do with that at all. Um, it could be half a mile or 10 mile away from home. It wouldn't make any difference. I th and you get some horses that, you know, like people, they they don't particularly want to go to work. You know, you put off mowing the lawn. Um, like all of us, you put off mowing the lawn. Let's just use that as a, for instance. And then you think, oh, I'll have to mow that lawn if I want to get it done. If it rains tomorrow, I'm going to get it done. You get up, you start your mower up, you mow the lawn, and then you end up staying out there for another half an hour, an hour, and do a bit of weeding or you know prune them roses or whatever it might be yeah well the same with horses when you get them in the shafts and you leave the yard and they get down the road and they start you know seeing the world in a different place and they quite enjoy just going for a, a trot round and and like that seeing things and if you look at my films the horses like you can tell the tails are off their quarters their ears are pricked up forward or laying out to the side all rubbery but you don't see them very tense and tight their ears they're you know they're moving about picking up information but uh, but you know that's it so it is a case and I don't want to overstate it it's not a very nice thing to say you know that about you know it's not the vicious bull that hurts you know? it's the quiet one because you're not expecting it you could be walking up here now and he would just turn in they were just coming up to a little turning here to the right hand side going into a farmyard I don't know if we got it today but the other day we was there and he just turned straight in 
just turned straight in. And when I went to correct him, he, you know, he took some correcting to get him to come back out on the road. So he never actually took the cart into this turning. But his four feet were in there. So he'd made a decision, we're going this way. That's no good. Please make no mistake about that. That's highly, highly dangerous. The way we've got to look at horses, which is horrible, and a lot of people won't like what I'm going to say, but if you think about it for a minute, it's common sense. What we look at this horse as is the motive power, the engine. You are in charge and responsible for everything else that goes on. Steering, braking, distance you go, the speed you go, the time of day you go and where you go is entirely up. Walk on. Walk up. Now, if you look there, there's a few barrels in that field where they had a, um, a wedding down there in the woods. So I'd expect him to have a look at that because that's unusual, them being there. So he lifted his head and had a look, but he made no attempt to go in. And he's just strolling down here now. So I hope you understand that and take it that, um, for what it's worth. If, please look at the horse as the motive power and you're in charge of everything else. So, if your car, if you was driving your car up here, and, and, and you let go of the steering and it went off the road, it wouldn't be the car's fault, would it? It'd be your fault, yeah? And if it went off the road again after that, then it'd be your fault for not putting it in the garage and getting it sorted. So, he's in the garage, we've sorted it, we're in top, we're, I think we're on top of it now. Um, but it doesn't mean to say when it goes back, it's old surroundings, that it thinks it can get away with it again. Um, you know, he'd done it with me. I'm not saying he did do it with his folk. Maybe he didn't. But he's definitely doing it, doing it, you know, when he come. But I would say, but they might not see it in the same way. You know, I don't want to condemn anybody. I don't do that. I don't have to do that to make myself right. It's just what I believe, but it's a it's a serious thing, you know. It's not a, not a game when you're on the public highway, sharing the public highway with other road users. You've got to be responsible, and your horse has got to be used to and have seen. If you watch the videos, um, I mean, we could drive this horse now in the heaviest traffic in the middle of town. No trouble at all. No trouble at all. Um, and I don't think, I don't think that I can recall a time when he's not been all right in town. But when he gets out into the suburbs, you know, on the way home, um, he can be entirely different. Or he'll want to just turn around and go home. Or he wants to turn around. Whether he wants to go home, obviously I don't know because don't let him turn around and go home, do I? So, and obviously we check him all over and make sure everything's as it should be, that he's comfortable. He's not, as you can see now, he's comfortable enough. Like there's a motor car coming down here. You can say, well, this is dangerous to do. But there's the rain slack, yeah? No brake, nothing at all, and he'll stroll up the road. So his confidence is good. You know, he knows what he's doing, he knows where he's going. Everything like that is fine. So it is just a case of when he thinks he's gonna do it, he'll do it. And you've got to be on the ball. So you can't be sitting here chatting away to somebody and looking at the scenery and like that. You've got to be concentrating on this horse. Certainly when they get him home, so that if it does happen, they can correct him and the way to correct him is just to raise your voice to him not scream and shout because i'm very quiet behind him so but i would go i don't want to make a noise now and what's it but i would go that'll do you know change the tone of my voice start with you know darker deeper tone um and that's what i would do and just say to him that you know but that's not acceptable so it just concerns me when he goes home They've got to listen to me, because otherwise it could be a bad accident before you know it. So yeah, not um, 
it's one of the, the sides of training that um, is not and also it's, you're not you're not, not very pleasant it's you know it's and it don't want to be confrontational and I want any of that nonsense what I say is for the good of the owner and this horse yeah this little cob it's just you know that's why I'm you know because this will happen with other, other people that girl was driving I've had it loads of times phone calls over the years you know I don't say I get a phone call every week but you get it quite often during the, you know, the course of a year where so I was just going down the road he just stopped all of a sudden and turned around well it's no good is it it's highly dangerous if the car's overtaking it and so on you can find your horses laid up the bonnet of the car people are uh, it's just an accident waiting to happen but I've got it out of him now I feel confident I've just shown you several times I'm going to show you at the trot you know on another film where we let the reins go dead slack and let him get on with plenty of places to pull it off do you understand what I mean like driveways turnings etc and he won't he'll just keep going whether I try it on with the owners or not I don't know Anyway, I know that was a bit of a long lecture, but it's uh, something that obviously is concerning.